1,000 kilometers, 21 days, five different countries, six different cities, zero euros. My name is Edward, and in June 2016, I traveled for 21 days with absolutely no money. So from Germany to Hungary, here was the challenge, to travel with no money. And to toughen up the challenge a bit, I committed to not use internet. So I couldn't use couch surfing or help picks or the similar websites that allows you to find a host or accommodation for free. So I emptied my wallet before leaving home and I hit the road. And like this began one of the most incredible experiences I've ever lived in my life. When I came back home, everybody asked me the same question. How? How did you do that? How did you survive for 21 days with no money? I can't even survive for one day with no money. I have to eat, I have to sleep somewhere. How did you do that? Well, here is the secret. When you travel, you basically only have three things to pay. The first thing is transportation, going from point A to point B. The second thing is food. What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? And the last thing is accommodation. Where are you going to sleep? And you can make these three things free. And here is how. For transportation, I hitchhiked the old trip. I've been picked up by cars, trucks, vans. Well, that wasn't a van, actually. That was a hearse. You know, the kind of vehicle that transports dead people. So that van was transporting a dad from Leipzig to Dresden, and let's just say I had the privilege to be part of the wonderful journey. <laughs> I even got a ride from a smart car that was driving 150 kilometers an hour on the highway in Germany. I mean, I have to say, I didn't even know such a small car could drive that fast. And I have to admit, I was quite a bit scared. For foods, I was asking local restaurants for leftovers. So I would just run into a restaurant and say, hey, my name is Edward, I'm 23 years old, I'm traveling with no money. Um, if you have anything that is not good anymore that you plan to throw that you can't sell anymore, I'll be more than happy to have it. Uh, as expected, most people told me no. Um, but sometimes I received bread. And I have to admit that during three days, that's the only thing I ate, bread and water. But as you can see, I was happy. <laughs> but sometimes people would cook a real, me a, re a real meal from scratch for me or give me delicious dishes. This is how I had chocolate cake with cappuccino in Dresden, a uh, gratin dauphinois in Leipzig. Uh, that chocolate cake with that macaron at the number one cake shop, according to TripAdvisor in Budapest. And that soup and that fruit juice in the number one restaurant, according to TripAdvisor again in Vienna. And about this restaurant, uh, when I wanted to sit down, the waiter pulled out my chair so that I could sit down. I mean, nobody has ever done that to me before in my life. <laughs> and finally, for accommodation, I was asking local people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? <laughs> um, as expected, nine out of 10 times, people would just tell me no. Uh, but I learned something from that. The thing I learned is to redefine my view about rejection. Now, we all face rejection in our daily lives. We go to that job interview, we get rejected. We don't get the job. We go talk to that pretty girl in the bar, we get rejected. The thing is, 
most of us experience rejection once a day, once a week, sometimes even once a month. And we are not so used to it. And that's why it hurts so much. But there are two things I'd like to share with you about rejection. And that comes from a guy who has experienced an average of 20 rejections a day. Between the rejections I faced when I was hitchhiking, asking for food, or asking for accommodation. The first thing I'd like to share with you about rejection is that people are never rejecting you. People are rejecting the idea you represent. When you are hitchhiking, for example, who has ever hitchhiked in his life before? Hitchhiking? All right? Good. Um, when you are hitchhiking, the vast majority of people who won't take you hitchhiking won't do that simply because that's who they are. They don't take hitchhikers. Uh, don't take it personally. And the second thing about rejection is that rejection does not mean you'll have nothing. Rejection just means that you'll have something a little bit different. When I was, for example, uh, asking in the streets to random people, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? And people told me no. I wasn't telling myself, oh, that means I'm going to have to sleep outside tonight in the streets. No, I was just telling myself, all right, that means I'm going to find someone else and live another experience that might be even better than the one I just missed. To me, we should never be afraid of rejection because it's just part of life. And to me, getting what you want in life is just a matter of being willing to experience enough rejections before having what you want. And in the end, I didn't sleep a single night outside. Uh, it did happen that I was still looking for someone at 4 a.m. in the street, but I always found somebody. And in the end, it taught me to put things into perspective. When I would finally find someone to host me, before falling asleep as I was laying on the couch or on the bed, uh, I would fall asleep in, uh, I would always remind myself, hey, I got food in my stomach, I got water in my bottle, and I got a roof above my head, and a mattress under my back. Everything is fine, I'm happy. These three things, food, water, and shelter, are things we take for granted in our daily lives. But if we think about it, we're actually so blessed and lucky to have it. Now, what are the lessons that I've learned from that? Why did I do such a thing? I already shared some of the lessons with you, but I'd like now to share the four biggest lessons I've learned from doing this kind of trip. And I believe these are lessons we can all apply in our daily lives because in the end life is a journey too the first thing i've learned is that this is not about what you get this is about what you give i began this journey wondering each time i was meeting someone new what can i get from this person can i get food can i get a ride can i get accommodation and i ended up this journey asking myself questions that were completely different Questions like, what can I give to this person? Can I give a smile, my enthusiasm, an inspiring story to share, an ear to listen to problems? Sing a song for them, dance with them, anything. And switching these questions from the getting to the giving completely changed my journey. And I have to say that I lived the best moments of my journey when I was in the giving mindset and not in the getting mindset. But to give, you have to meet people. And that's the second thing I've learned. Drop the fear to approach people, and the world can actually be an amazing place. Um, when you travel with no money, it forces you to constantly meet new people, because your survival depends on it. Um, when, you, when we think about it in our daily life, we sometimes even struggle for ask, to ask our way when we are lost. It's so easy to take our smartphones and just ask Google. We are not so used anymore to start a conversation with a complete stranger and to build a relationship out of nothing. This journey taught me to drop my fear of the other. And I've learned that you don't need a good reason to start a conversation. You don't need to be in the same sports club. You don't need to be in the same university. You don't need to be introduced by a common friend. There to just run in a bar and say to the first person you see, hey, 
I just met you, and this is crazy. <laughs> All right, don't say that. Uh, but there to just say, hey, uh, I thought you were cool. My name is Edward. Uh, don't say your name is Edward unless your name is Edward. Uh, but there to say it. This guy and his friend, for example, they were carrying a couch around Vienna. At each famous stops, they had to stop, lay on the couch, seven stops, and just enjoy life. Uh, when I saw them, I had to introduce myself. I told them, guys, you, you are just amazing. And they, they looked at me and they told me, you want to come with us? And uh, this is how I ended up spending an whole afternoon with two, guy from, two guys from Vienna, just carrying a couch around Vienna. Uh, the third lesson I've learned is that sometimes not having the choice is the best option you can have. When you travel with money, you can basically pick anything you want. You can decide the food you're going to eat, where you're going to stay at, the transportation you're going to take. But when you decide to travel with no money, you just don't have that luxury anymore. So when someone gives you something, you have to accept it. Uh, when you're hitchhiking, for example, and you're hitchhiking, a car stops, the car looks a bit dirty, the driver doesn't really seem to speak the language you're speaking, you can't just say, hey, thank you, but you know, I'll just wait for another car. You can't say that. I mean, the, the guy gave you a chance, so you have to give him a chance. And this is how I ended up spending two hours in the truck of a Ukrainian truck driver. During two hours, he kept telling me stories in Ukrainian. I don't speak Ukrainian. <laughs> uh, and every 10 minutes, I had to reply him with a broad smile on my face. You get that I don't understand a single word <laughs> of what you're saying, don't you? But you know what? That was one of the most inspiring and funny, funniest story I had during the journey. Because, you see, I am not so sure that if I would have met this guy in a bar in my own town, I would have spent two hours talking with him, especially not in Ukrainian. But here, 1,000 <coughs> kilometers away from home, with no money, I had no choice. And sometimes not having the choice is the best option you can have. The last lesson is that there are no such things as bad experiences. To me, they are just experiences that lead you to better things. But I believe we should never regret anything because ultimately, the bad things that happen to us make us grow and lead us to better things. Uh, I think this was the second night of my trip. I was in Leipzig, Germany, and I began asking random people in the street, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight? Around 8 p.m., after four hours of experiencing rejections, 20 rejections, uh, it was midnight, darkness, the night, and I, I still didn't have to find anybody to host me. And so I began to ask myself questions, questions like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself in such con conditions where I experience so many rejections and I feel so bad? But then I met those four German girls, and they accepted to host me. They told me, all right, you, c you can sleep at our place. I, I was so happy. And then they told me, but first, we go to a nightclub, and you are coming with us. There I was in heaven. And at some point of, of the night, one of them asked me, Edward, what's the worst thing about traveling the way you do? And I thought about it, and I just replied, well, you know, nothing. Because, you see, tonight I experienced more than 20 rejections, and during four hours I felt, I felt really bad. But all these little rejections led me at the exact place, at the right time, where I crossed your path. And going to an iClub with you is not something I'm going to forget for a very long time. So I don't regret anything. And that's basically the story of my journey. How all these little rejections and bad moments I experienced led me to meet the people who made my journey. And I lived moments I will remember as long as I live. As a closing, am I trying to sell you something? Am I suggesting that you should just leave your wallet and all your money at home and start traveling the way I did? Of course not. If it's not your thing, well, don't do it. But all I want to say is, they're a bit more. 
A little bit of courage can change your life. It changed mine. Ask yourself the question, what would I do if I were completely fearless? Dare to say hello to that stranger. Pursue your dream, go on an adventure. Because in the end, like Ellen Keller once said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Thank you very much.